This discussion covers how to use the Open File dialog box with Visual Basic. The Open File dialog provides a pop-up window to make it easy for the user to pick a file from a different selection. Another good thing is it provides a consistent user interface so that when somebody's used to using one program in Windows to open a file, then they'll have a consistent user interface and then they'll also already know how to open a file when they use your program. Before we use the Open File dialog, I'd like to see how we can open a text file in Visual Basic without using the Open File dialog. In this example, the file name is hard-coded into the program. For example, it says dim file name is string, and this is going to be where I put my file name. It has c colon slash user slash dan slash desktop slash abc.txt. In this case, I would put a file named abc.txt on my desktop, and I'd be able to find it. In this case, you're going to need to substitute the word Dan with the login name that you used when you started Windows. One of the things you need is at the top of your program is to say imports system.io. We need that in order to access the disk. Later on in the program, I can say file name as string equals and then the name of my file. The first thing we need to do is to see if the file even exists. I can use an if statement if system.io.file exists and then the file name. If that equals true, then I can go ahead and open the file and process the data. Else, I'll put up a message box that says file does not exist. If the file does exist, I can say dim input file as stream reader. Stream reader is a class. What I'm going to do is to create an object called input file. This is almost like creating an integer using the dim. I could say dim counter as integer. Now I'm saying dim input file as stream reader. You can use any name you wish instead of input file because this is the name of the object that you are creating inside your program. Next I'll say input file equals file.open text and then the file name. So file then dot open text. Open text is a member method part of the file system. In this case, I'm going to use a multi-line text box in order to read the file. I'll say textbox1.text equals input file dot read to end. Read to end is going to read the entire file and place it into the text box. When I'm done, I need to close the file. Input file dot close, open close parentheses. Some languages and some operating systems get really picky if you don't close the file. What happens is the file has the data on the disk. We're going to be reading the data from the disk into the RAM and then processing the data from the RAM. We need to close the file to say that we are all done. Here's something interesting. Originally, Microsoft DOS uses the backslash character to separate parts of the file spec, which includes directories, subdirectories, also known as folders, and file names. Unix uses the forward slash to separate the file spec. Since most of the servers on the web are Unix-based, it became common to use the forward slash. When you look at a file spec or uniform resource locator on a web then it's using the forward slash. So now Microsoft has decided we will accept both either forward slash or backslash. You can use either one when you're defining the file spec for a file. Now let's go on to creating the open file dialog. Double click the open file dialog tool in the dialog section of the toolbox. You may have to scroll down and you may also have to open up the dialogs part of the toolbox. Click on that and then what happens is you're going to get an open file dialog to show up in the component tray. It won't show up when the program is running, the component tray is hidden.
Give the open file dialog a good name. Preferably, it should start with OFD. For example, OFD get file name. Here are some of the properties you need to be aware of for the open file dialog. Title, this is optional. It just sets the text that will appear at the top of the open file dialog when it pops up on the screen. Filter identifies which files will be displayed as a possible selection by the user. Initial directory, now this is optional. By default, the open file dialog displays the current directory based on where the program is running. You can also set initial directory to choose a different spot. File name returns the name that's selected by the user. This property can also be used by the program to set a default file name before the open file dialog is activated. Here's a little more information on the filter property. If the filter property is set to star.txt, then only files with the .txt file extension are displayed. If the filter property is set to star.star, .star, then all the files are displayed. The filter property is set with a string that has two parts that are separated by the vertical bar, also known as a pipe. Part 1 has the text that will appear on the screen. Part 2 is the filter itself. In this example, I can define what gets displayed on the screen when the open file dialog is shown. The display in this case will be text files, open parentheses, startup text. The filter itself that's being used by the program is star.txt. I can give the opportunity of selecting several different filters with the vertical bar separating each filters. So that when the user uses the open file dialog box, then they can have a pull down for the file types. In this example, I have three different filters that the user can select. Text files, star.txt. Documents, start.doc, doc, all files, start.star. .star. When you open the file dialog and the user selects a file, they either need to press the OK button or the Cancel button. You can use an if statement as part of activating the open file dialog and test to see if the result is OK or you could even test to see if the result is canceled. But there's only two buttons, so if it's OK, you do one thing. If it wasn't OK, then it must have been canceled. In this example, it says, if ODF get file name dot show dialog, open close parenthesis. This activates the open file dialog box. When it returns, we can test to see what the result is. If ODF get file name dot show dialog equals windows dot forms dot dialog result dot OK, that happens to be a constant that's already provided in Windows, then input file equals ODF get file name equals open text. And here, if I say ODF get file name, that's the name of my object for the, the dialog box, dot file name, file name is a property. So then I can open the text file using the file name that was selected by the open file dialog box. Here's something handy. There's a width statement. Use the width statement to use one object so you don't need to keep typing its name over and over again. Now, instead of typing the name of the object, just start with the period and the selected object will be used. In this example, with ODF get file name, dot show dialog, open and close parentheses. Well, that really becomes ODF get file name, dot show dialog, open and close parentheses. Then, input file equals dot open text, open parentheses, dot file name, close parentheses. See where it says dot open text? That really becomes ODF get file name, dot open text. And where it says dot get file name, that becomes ODF get file name dot file name. Saves a little typing. You have to just make sure that you, if you start with a with, you also have an end with to close that block off. 
There are several other dialog boxes that are similar. There's one to select color, etc. There's also a save file dialog. And it works very similar to the open file dialog. After the user clicks the save or clear button, the return value from the dialog box can be used to determine which button was clicked and the file name property is available which identifies the name of the file to be saved. You have to remember that this file dialog box just gets a file name. It doesn't actually save the file. You need to do that in your program.